And then as I was plugging things back into power back up, or I was starting to, uh, I've got this SATA and this Molex that I just took out that I decided I was going to leave off. So on ASRock's website, it says plug in Molex and SATA power connector for maximum stability. Well, maximum stability sounds pretty good. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. Hope you guys are doing great today. If you are new around these parts, be sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. Today we are going to be talking about part three of our 3060 Ti rig build. We're going to be putting the finishing touches, if you will, on this rig build here. And there's a few things that I really need to update you guys on uh, regarding this ZSX Parallel Miner breakout board here and how it operates with the motherboard and how we have this configured and then what's coming next. But we're going to walk through ROI, where we are right now, how long we think it's going to take to pay this rig off. Now, I did mention before that my final two 3060 Ti's still on back order right now. I actually probably, like many of you guys, I actually have a couple that were supposed to be here already multiple times through multiple sources. I've, I've had multiple balls rolling here to get this rig build finished with just different brands of 3060 Ti's and they have not come in yet. So we are only going to talk Ethereum because as we finish part three here, these 3070s, they'd use a little bit more wattage. Other than that, they behave very similar to the 3060 Ti's. So we'll do our ROI, we'll do our entire earnings discussion all based on the rig as it stands today. And then I may come back down the road when I get those final two 3060 Ti's, do a quick part four, and probably in that one, we'll cover other algorithms on how the rig is hashing, what the profitability looks like on other algorithms. All right, a couple things I wanted to update you guys on with the Parallel Miner ZSX breakout board here. This, I should go ahead and tell you right now, I've been in discussions with Parallel Miner since I put out that very first video where we did a review on this board right here. So a couple things I wanted to touch on here real quick. First off, this board that I have right here, this is revision one of this that they have put out. Now I have the second revision that will be coming to me. We will be testing it here on the channel. I'm very excited to be able to show you that. Now there are some surprises on some of the functionality that it's gonna have, but I'll leave it at that for now. And we'll show you once we get the product, some of the changes that are gonna be made. And most importantly, if you all watch the part one and part two of this build series here, I was playing around. I kind of, I guess you could say I got distracted a little bit, playing around with powering the motherboard from the Molex connector and the SATA connector that comes supplied with this breakout board. I was plugging those in where I could get it to reach to the motherboard. Now, Parallel Miner officially says, do not do this. And I hinted at that. I think I did a, threw up some text in my last video. Do not connect this breakout board to the motherboard. And the reasoning for that is this board is designed for 200 watts only on the ATX side. So not the PCIe side where you've got 16 slots available to connect up to graphics cards and risers and fans, whatever you want to do with it. So the ATX side, which includes the Molex connections, the 24 pin, the eight pin to the motherboard, all of that, it's capped at 200 Watts. And from what I understand, the testing that Parallel Miner did, they did not connect to SATA, but they did connect to these two Molex, and they had some concerns that at times, your rig was going to pull on the ATX side over 200 watts. Now, I didn't blow anything out when I tested this, so obviously I didn't approach that or exceed that, but I'm guessing that it is possible at times as power may spike or as power is being drawn from USB here from these PCIe adapters that are connected into the motherboard, these 1X adapters. So in short, with Rev1 of this ZSX breakout board, do not push this beyond 200 watts and their suggestion, do not connect Molex or SATA to the motherboard. This Molex and SATA connector is only for powering low power SSD devices. That's it. 
So their suggestion with this board is they do sell some, I think they're fairly inexpensive, maybe five or six dollars uh, cables. They're six pin to Molex that you can actually plug into some of your extra slots that you have on here. So you're going to plug in that six pin and you're going to take that out to Molex. Now, if you want to power both of the Molex slots, you could either get two of those or they have an additional cable that splits the six pin to two Molex connections here. So that's what they are recommending at this time. And I just wanted to make you guys aware of that. Now revision two is gonna change some things. Like I said, it's gonna raise the capabilities of this board in a couple of ways that are really interesting. And I'll touch on that once I get the product. One other problem I had, if you see right here, we've got one, two, three, four chassis fan slots on this side of the fan hub. And then there's another four right behind them. So you can take eight total fans. Now, when I was building this, I really didn't think much about it. I put 10 on here. See, there's five here in the front, and we've got five along the back here. And once I did that, I was two fans over what was allowed here. So what I did was I took two of the fans in the back, and I connected them to the chassis fan slots on the motherboard here. So I've got eight fans connected here, two chassis fans on the motherboard, and then one CPU fan also connected to the motherboard. So we've got three fans running off the motherboard. If I don't mention it, I'll get questions in the comments and I thought it'd be better to go ahead and head those off now as to how we got this all put together with this build. It's been mining, I think for a couple weeks now. We'll, we'll check that as we move over to the desktop. So that being said, let's switch over to the desktop. Let's take a look at the hash rate that we covered in the previous video, the hash per watt. And then let's also take a look at the ROI. All right, folks, here we are in Hive OS, and we're just going to do a quick rundown on the rig. But you can see the rig is performing really, really well. We're at 99.87% with accepted shares of 47,218, rejected shares 63. In the last video we did, we were at 872 watts at the wall when we tested this which gives us an average of about 145 watts per GPU all in that also includes the wattage for the motherboard risers fans etc you take the entire system divide it by six gpus and you get 145 average watts per gpu and we said our hash rate was 372.2 mega hash so let's hop over to what to mine real quick and if we take a look at our earnings it's kind of interesting today on this rig octopus conflux jumped up ahead of ethereum that's pretty exciting Ethereum, right now, we are at $31.94 after electric in profit on this rig. Before electric, we're at $34.25. All right, we're going to switch over now to a spreadsheet that I used in my ROI calculations video I did a while back where I showed you all how I track the return on investment for my rigs. In here, I've got some basic costs that I've paid when I purchased all of my uh, core components over the last couple years before the prices run up. So for now, I'm just going to, I have ROI'd a bit of this, but I'm just going to use 490 as our base for the system. And then the total cost for these 3000 series GPUs, and I am accounting for the 3070s that are in there. We've got six of them at $3,319. And let me point out real quick, anything with a blue background in the data that you're about to see is where I can make a manual entry and it will manipulate the calculations. Now if we look at the best view ROI spreadsheet here for Rogue One, our total rig cost is $3,809 as we said. And our days to ROI, the entire rig based on $3,809 is 119 days. So right at about four months. Now we have been mining on this rig for a couple of weeks. We've mined roughly 0.3 Ethereum that as of today's date is worth 1600 USD. That makes the value of what we've mined so far at $495 towards our goal of 3809 So I put together some calculations in here. Our percentage of the rig we've paid off as of today is 13%. And this number will change over time. The background <laughs> will change over time with conditional formatting. The closer we get to 100, the lighter green this will change. The days we have remaining to 100% is 104 if the price were to remain constant. And we know that it won't. It's either going to go up or it's going to go down. 
And if I want to just play around with numbers a little bit, I built in some additional functionality in this spreadsheet. I'm not going to go into it in depth. If you want to learn about that, you can take a look at my video. I think it's called How I ROI My Mining Rigs. You can just search for it on the channel. But you can do a little bit of manipulation with some of these blue fields here if you want to uh, get an idea of how things may change over time. So for example, if I think Ethereum is going back to 2000 or somewhere thereabouts, I could maybe change this multiplier. What we are multiplying the price of Ethereum by currently is one. I could say 1.25 and that changes our days to ROI, what I call the best view ROI, to 94 days right here. And you can see our remaining days is 79 days and we're 20% along our way to paying it off because the price of Ethereum has increased. And by the way, I have not sold to USD, so I'm holding this Ethereum. Therefore, any price increases or decreases will affect this field right over here. And just for fun, Let's get a little nutty. Let's say two. So we're multiplying the price of Ethereum by two, which would put us at a selling at a double around 3,200 Ethereum. That means we will have a best view ROI of 58 days, days remaining to 100% payoff, 43 days. So just uh, one to two months, one to two months if we were to get something great like that to happen. Now, if we did 0 0.5, if Ethereum were to take a downturn, and drop to about 800 on Ethereum. That puts us at 257 days ROI. Gosh, that's sobering. That's like the numbers we were looking at just under a year ago right there. But I can still live with that. That's the game I signed up for. So before I feel too bad, let's put that back at one. Then one last thing I wanna show you is I can account for resale value if I wanna wrap my brain around that. So let's say the cards uh, six months from now or only worth maybe half, we'll call it 300 per GPU. If I subtract the resale value of $1,800 out from the total cost of the rig, that means I really only need to pay off $2,000. $2, so that means my ROI period is now down under best view to 63 days, and the days to get to this new best view, 47. 47 days, that's pretty exciting, 47 days to get to the ROI if I were to take into account selling off GPUs. All right, so let's reset this to zero. We've got this set to one, so everything's back to normal here. So right now I'm looking at about 104 days, guys, until I pay this off. I will keep you updated. I will let you know as we get closer and closer to get this thing paid off. Hopefully this will get easier, but 104 days, that's pretty exciting, and that feels you know pretty attainable. And I'll be excited for the day to come when I can tell you guys this thing is paid off. So we will end there. If you have any questions about any of this, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video, Raptors. Take care. We can do anything together If we just try as long as we have our backs, we never our thoughts come by. This time we will win. This time we'll have to join forces. This time we will win. This time we'll have to join forces.